Hi guys, we're back with another Friday the 13th movie review and this is the one that a lot of people want to discuss and that is Friday the 13th Part 8 Jason Takes Manhattan. So straight from the off, this movie did feel a little bit strange, especially at the very beginning. We see no recap of what happened in the movies before, so this automatically tells us it's not going to take anything to do with anything that happened in the movies before. It was replaced with this silly montage of what's supposed to be Manhattan, and it's just very dreary looking and doesn't feel like a Friday the 13th movie at all. Although this is a direct sequel to the other seven movies, it just felt totally disconnected to the rest of the movies straight from the off. And another thing that it felt really disconnected to the other movies was that it wasn't set at Camp Crystal Lake or around that area. Now I know that the beginning of the movie has a little bit of Camp Crystal Lake in it, but ultimately the rest of the movie takes place on a boat and a little part of what's supposed to be Manhattan. So we start off with a classic resurrection scene with Jason and it does take place at Camp Crystal Lake so I like this part, it's a very cheesy scene, we have two classically unlikable, unlikable characters uh, who are killed off straight away by Jason and it also explains how Jason gets his new mask, complete with uh, very very accurate scar lines from the previous movies. But I will say, like I said, that this scene was very cheesy but I do like this scene because it's set at Camp Crystal Lake. I've said it time and time again and this movie is no exception, the character development in this film was probably one of the worst uh, and the entire series. The acting is very cheesy. We do have a couple of notable actors and actresses in this film, but it was one of their first in their careers and it was just a terrible film, uh, in terms of character development at least. And then we've also got this knockoff Crazy Ralph, uh, who's acting like Crazy Ralph. He says things like, this voyage is doomed. It just seems like a very cheap knockoff of Crazy Ralph from the first two movies. Now I've mentioned location in most of my reviews for the Friday the 13th movies. The location being a character in its own. Now, I don't know whose idea it was to take it away from Camp Crystal Lake and set it in Manhattan. That's bad enough, but what makes this even worse is the movie's not even set in Manhattan for most of the film. Uh, we've got two or three minutes at the beginning at Camp Crystal Lake, that's good. And then we've got this boat sequence for about an hour and ten minutes, which is just so bizarre. Uh, and then for the last 20 minutes, we've got the back alleys of Manhattan and then maybe a minute of Manhattan itself, which again, I don't think it was filmed in Manhattan. So it was just a strange setup for the film and I don't know whose idea that was, but it was just terrible. I think if they maybe condensed it just to the boat sequence, that would have been more acceptable. Uh, and what they should have done, in my opinion, would be to maybe set it around Camp Crystal Lake, the waters around the lake there. That would have been more acceptable because it would have been at Camp Crystal Lake and in the water the way they wanted it. Now there's memorable kills all the way through this franchise and one redeeming factor about Jason Takes Manhattan is one of the kills in this film and it involves Julius. Julius is trying to box Jason, he punches him a few times and then Jason just punches his head clean off. That's probably the only redeeming part of this whole entire movie is one of the kills in the film and if that is one of the redeeming parts of the film you know that something's going wrong. Now moving on to Jason again, I think I don't know what the filmmakers were thinking about this whole young Jason. The girl was seeing visions of a young Jason and each time she sees him he gets more and more deformed. Um, but they're just changing the history of Jason in this film. I don't think it matters because nobody really takes this film seriously. Um, but he's got he's this little boy with long hair and stuff like that. It's just completely the wrong Jason. It was just so stupid. Uh, and then as for the adult Jason, we've got Kane Hodder playing him for a second time. Uh, yeah. Kane Hodder was good in this film, he was one of the, again, the only redeeming factors about this film. And that's a good thing for Jason because it looks like Kane Hodder wants to latch on to the Jason character for future movies and he does that. Um, but again, he's generic for me, he just gets in the way, he's, he walks like Jason does. There's nothing amazing that Kane Hodder does that the other Jasons didn't do. Did anyone else notice that the punk in the alley shot Jason six times? I shot him six times! Hmm? At first I didn't consider Jason Takes Manhattan as one of the worst movies in the franchise. Uh, I've mentioned that on my Twitter page, my Facebook and on YouTube, but after revisited, revisiting it, and I'm glad I did, it clearly is one of the worst ones. You can take your pick as to why I think it is one of the worst Friday the 13th movies. And I have said it before, the scene at the beginning, which was cheesy enough, was one of the best scenes, if not the best scene in the film. So if your best scene in a movie is at the beginning and it all goes downhill from there, then you're on to a loser straight away. If I had to say anything positive about this film, it would maybe be the campy camera angles. They were kind of like, are you afraid of the dark? 
style uh, and maybe the camera quality is of that quality of a late 80s horror movie which is very nostalgic but that's all really oh and Kelly Hugh I would say that those sort of positives are the only are only positive for those who have watched it when it first came out like me I watched it back in the, the early 90s didn't watch it when it just came out but I watched it back in the early 90s so I appreciated that style of movie back then but if you're watching this film for the first time you might not even get to the end of the film, you'll probably just turn it off halfway through. So what do you think of Jason Takes Manhattan, guys? I urge you to watch it again and again if you did like it slightly. Uh, and maybe it'll wear off and you end up hating it like I did. Uh, I do hate this movie, unfortunately. Like I said, I didn't hate it before. I'm really wishing I didn't watch it now because I, I do have fond memories of it. But it is a bad movie and that's it. Anyway guys, thanks a lot for watching again. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.